All right, I'm gonna show you how to make this procedural fire in After Effects, no plugins. You can download the project file for free. Let's get into it. All right, so I got a new comp open and I got my match and it's attached to a null object. Not really important, but we are going to attach our fire to something, so I'm gonna use a null object. All right, so let's make a new solid here call this fire and we are going to add to this whenever this loads come on okay we're going to add to this a particle systems 2 great all right so on the particle systems what we want is we want to open up physics and we want to change it from explosive to fire and look at that we are pretty much done, okay? But this doesn't really look like fire, does it? No. So what we want to do is we want to open up particle here. And we want to change this from line to bubble. All right, so we got some bubble action going on. And we want to make sure that our death size is smaller than our birth size. So let's put the death size at zero, bring the birth size up to like 56.5.6.7, something like that, so that the birth is larger than death. It gets smaller over time. And we're going to leave it on fade out so it fades out over time. Max opacity somewhere between 50, 70%, something like that. Size variation, fine. Now we, we also can do a little bit of coloring here if we want. So the birth color, I don't know if you've ever seen a fire before. Usually they are like a lightish yellow color when they start and at the top, like a reddish orange color. So the default settings are really fine here. Now I think I want to make the birth rate be a little bit lower somewhere in the one point something. Longevity a little bit shorter as well. One point something. It's fine. What I also want to do is I want to attach this producer to my null object. So I have the position open on my null object by clicking P like that. And then on my fire, I want to alt click on this position here. And I want to pick whip this to the position there like this. Now you'll notice if I move around this null object, this will move with it although right now it doesn't look like it's reacting to this but if we make a keyframe something like this to over here now our fire is reacting to this movement so we got something like this now very cool i'll give this a little bit of easing and we are good so now let's add a little bit of styling to this fire all right so what I'll do is I will add a vector blur to this layer and let's zoom in a little bit so we can check this out and let's crank up this amount on this vector blur somewhere around 40 and we want to change this type because this does not look natural maybe you want to put this at directional center cool now this looks a little bit more kind of like an oil painting or something that's pretty nice all right so that looks good here and I'm also going to add a levels to this. So we'll add on to this a levels right here. I'm gonna minimize my vector blur and I'm gonna change the amount or I mean the channel to alpha. And now when I crunch this stuff in, you can see that it's really crunching in the amount of transparency in here. Just something like this. I wanna leave these edges nice and soft, but crunch in the transparency a little bit like that i think that looks good now i'm going to add on to this a turbulent displace all right so we're going to add on a turbulent displace and the reason for this is because we want to make this more wobbly fire is very wobbly so let's bring down this size maybe like 25 and the amount to be like 40 and we're going to open up the evolution options and we're going to alt click on the random seed and I'll type in like time times a low number like 12, okay? And so now what this is gonna do is it's going to add this nice shakiness to our fire. Really make it feel really crazy and shaky like a fire is. Cool, so now let's go ahead and add on 
even more styling to this fire to get it even more fiery. So if I wanna colorize this even more and I go back into this color map here, if I try to change these colors, it's not really going to do much. I mean, you can, you can play around with some of these colors and try to change this stuff, but it doesn't really work that well. If I changed up some of these colors at the top here, it's not super dramatic. Um, and I'm a pretty dramatic guy. So what I'm gonna do instead of changing those colors is I'm going to add a colorama to this. Add a colorama and drag it onto this layer here. And now this is pretty crazy and cool, but you can see we're getting some pretty crusty edges here. I don't really like these crusty edges. So I'll open up the modify and uncheck modify alpha. Now we have our nice edges back. And then I will open up the output cycle and I'll just choose the default fire setting, all right? Now we have a nice fiery color. So this was with the colorama, this was without. You get these nice, vibrant, fiery colors. All right, that's great. And now I'm also going to add an echo effect to this. So I will add this echo onto here and I'm gonna move this above my levels here and I'm gonna change the uh, echo operator to something like screen and that helps a little bit. And what the echo does is it kind of just adds a couple of copies onto here. So maybe if I make this like three and make this echo time a little bit lower, you can see that it just kind of adds like a little bit of blurring and a little more detail that just kind of, I don't know, makes it feel a little more fiery. And I think this flame is a little bit too big. So I'm just gonna bring the longevity down a little bit. That's probably good like this. And then one more thing I like to add stylistically is a scatter. This can totally be your choice if you like to add this or not. And I'm just gonna bring up the scatter a little bit and this kind of adds just some kind of pixelation to it, which I think is a cool effect if you like this pixelation or not on and off. I'll leave it on for now. Now, to get a nice glow, here's what we do not do. We're not going to add the default glow effect, okay? Because it looks really bad. Default glow in After Effects is not good and it's really hard to make this effect look good, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and delete that. Now, what you could do is you could buy a plugin like Deep Glow from AE Scripts and apply that and that looks really good really easy to use and it looks very nice. However, I said that this uh, video would be no plugins and that's not clickbait. So we're gonna delete that and we're gonna try something else. So if you pre-comp this layer by right clicking, pre-compose and you move all attributes into the new composition, now this fire is contained in this composition and we go back to our main composition. Now on our clean pre-comp here, we can get a nice glow by basically stacking some effects like a fast box blur and we blur this up and then adding a composite back on top and changing the blending mode to like add. And if we keep uh, adding these effects again and again, I'll duplicate this and add them again and keep kind of repeating this method, we can essentially create our own nice blur effect. So I have a preset saved and it looks something like this. I learned this technique from a workbench tutorial, which I will link in the description. And you can kind of get away with making a nice glow. Now you will notice that our fire is no longer falling around this null object. That's because we have broken the link by pre-composing it. So all we gotta do to fix that is go back into this comp here, double click E, to bring up this expression, you can see that it is giving us a little warning that it is broken. And if we look at this expression, you can see that it's trying to reference something in this comp that is no longer here. So all we gotta do to fix that is change it from this comp to comp with these parentheses and then type in our comp name, which in my case is comp2 and make sure that it's in quotations like that and then it will be linked back together. And now you have a nice glowing fire that still follows this null object. So that is it for this tutorial. Don't forget that you can download the project file for free in the description if you still need help. So 
Thank you for watching the video and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.